What better way to start off Energy Saturday than with the Rebels' most spirited supporter? And in-depth analysis on his pitching style. Yeah, that's it. You got that easy. Yeah, he, he's, got, he's got a bunch of pitches that no one knows how to throw yet. He's, he's inventing his own pitches. Uh, it looks like he's got some good uh, arm side run, too. Uh, definitely would be tough to hit. Probably tough to catch as well. He said he's going from the mound, too. He said yesterday, from the mound, 78 sinker strike. So, I believe him. He's going to paint the outside black. Unhittable pitch, but it's going to be definitely going to be a strike. I guarantee it's going to be somewhere in the low 90s, if I had to guess. I talked to him a little bit before. He's feeling pretty confident, so hopefully it's right down the middle, too. You ready? Let's yeah. do it now. Go, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to the field for today's ceremonial first pitch. And here to throw out the first pitch is Ole Miss superfan Henry man. Ulrich. Oh, on, Henry's connection with Ole Miss began with a special relationship with the Ole Miss baseball program and has blossomed into a connection that spans over all Ole Miss sports and the Rebel Nation. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for the Ulrich family. Superfan Henry Ulrich. Come here, big guy. Thank you so much. We love you, Henry. The strike thrown by Super Henry would set a precedent for the day. Happily continued by freshman hurler Gunner Hoagland. You gone! Get it! I'm Gunner! I'm Gunner! Extra curve away, extra curve away. The 0-2 to Honer. Swing and a miss. Chase the breaking ball away. Ah! Ah! That was gross! Fastball in, fastball in. Struck him out, 91 fastball, froze him in the inner half, got him looking. Great pitch. I kind of just started early. Uh, I just felt I had command of all three of my pitches, and uh, that's all you can really do, you know, just go out there, execute, and uh, everything else is out of your control. Gunner's mentality is, it seems like it's just go right after people. I think he's growing into this, like, new persona of someone who's going to go right at you and, like, try and see if you can hit his stuff, and if you can't hit it, he's just going to blow right past you. Despite the early control displayed by the freshman, an SEC opponent can take advantage of a single mistake. And after an elevated pitch and a trip around the bases for the Aggies, battle-tested veteran Cooper Johnson would do his part to settle the young pitcher down. Tom. Yep. Time. I don't care if you have to spike it, but start missing down. All okay? right, got you. Down in the zone. Come on. Oh boy, good. Right idea. Hey, one pitch away. Looking good, real good. And the two-two. Break your ball away in the dirt, ball three. Full count as Honer read that one, let it go by. And a boy, better. Very good. 1-1 one, one here today in the fifth. 1-2 pitch, swing and a miss. Struck out of a breaking ball in the dirt. See ya. Yes! Let's go, baby! Hey, yes. See? Just got to focus on just get shoving it down there. I'm going to block it up if you miss down. Keep attacking. Just miss down. You're so much better because your ball's sinking and diving when you're down there. It's really good down there. Johnson's leadership would pay off. The youthful arm settled in, leading to a 2-2 stalemate going into the last at-bats, and where one of the biggest swings of the day was one that didn't happen. Diller with nine long balls on the year. He's driven in 41. And he draws the walk. Now, there are a lot of power hitters out there that just kind of swing kind of aimlessly, you know, but uh, I knew if I could get on base as the, uh, as the opening base runner right there, then uh, all the guys behind me would hit me in for sure. Dillard at first, one down. Cole Zabowski, two for three, waiting for his first pitch. And here it comes. Zabowski lines one in the center field. Yeah. It's the third time. Of the Dillard's going to try to take third. The throw is off the mark. That's the unique thing about Thomas, is 
you look at him and he looks uh, like a bowling ball, but the thing that gets lost is that he's such a good base runner. And so Zebo gets to base it up the middle that moves the center fielder, I guess, slightly maybe to right field. Um, and so once Thomas saw that, the play's in front of him. So he doesn't have to look at me to see if I'm going to bring him or not. The play's right in front of him. I trust that he's going to make the right read. The whole outfield was playing about three steps away from the track. So once I saw where the center fielder was, uh, when I started running, I knew there was going to be no way that he could make that throw. So I took the extra base, and I knew getting there with no outs was going to be massive. And you knew at that point we're in really good shape because we got a runner at third base with less than two outs, and that's what we preach. But if you get the guy to third base with less than two outs, in all likelihood, we're going to score that guy. Base is loaded, one down, bottom of the ninth for Michael Fitzsimmons. He struck out swinging in the seventh. So it was bases loaded with one out. So I'm trying to see something up and elevate it so I can get a pop fly and anything to the outfield, Thomas will score because Thomas is quick enough to get to home plate. Well, Coach Clem, as soon as I got over there, he said, uh, he said, be ready for anything by him. Just got to beat the pitcher to the plate. Righty on righty. And here's his pitch. Ooh, big cut, foul to back, said he didn't touch it. He's coming home. He's safe. And the Rebels win. Yes, sir. Let's go. A walk-off wild pitch. And Dillard scores and Ole Miss sweeps Texas A&M. No, almost 10,000 people today. Electric stuff. Oh. Yeah!